mankind will kneel before its new master. Here's your look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Injustice 2 Gorilla Grodd. Telepathic Brutes, Gorilla Grodd has long sought to prove his peerless genius by subjugating mankind. He's gone so far as to form an anti-justice league, the society, to once and for all smash their opposition. Using his intellect and telepathy, Grodd enlists others in his mission to conquer the planet and fill the void of power left by Superman's regime. Damn dirty ape. Before we get a closer look at Injustice 2 Gorilla Grodd, the first thing we're going to want to do is take the tape measure that I have currently in my hand, and we're going to take it right to the very top of his helmet, stopping it right there. The DC Multiverse Injustice 2 Gorilla Grodd stands 7.7 .7 inches in height. Quickly switching that over to centimeters. The figure is almost, almost, it's almost there. It's not quite though. It's 19.7 centimeters tall. For the purpose of size comparisons, and simply just so I can actually make use of this figure, because I probably wouldn't any other way, here he is next to Injustice 2 Flash. Aw, oh, so mean. He's an okay figure. It's not something I would have personally picked out for my collection, but I already said that in the review. He's about the same height, which is kind of off-putting. Gorilla Grodd, I feel, if anything, could have been a build-a-figure for this wave. And simply would just have larger monkey parts to give you a much taller Gorilla Grodd. And resulting of this, because you're having the figure just as a standalone sold figure, Gorilla Grodd is about the same height as Flash. Like I said, he probably could have afforded being a little bit bigger. He could have also afforded having some accessories, because short of just the trading card and the display stand that we will be looking at shortly, Gorilla Grodd doesn't come with anything else. Now, you could say, because of the size of the figure, the quota for plastic is being met for more the girth of this gorilla, probably may have been one of the reasons why he didn't come include with any accessories, but I think he still should have come with something. Anyways, though, let's have a look at the display stand that comes include with Grodd. Yes, in fact, it's the same display stand as other instances of DC Multiverse figures. The branding of DC down below, and again, you've got one peg right at the top corner there. I don't know why these stands always seem to show the hair so much more easier, and fingerprints. Look at the fingerprints all over this place. I have to dust these up. Anyways, I'm going to put that to the side. He also comes included, if you have seen my review of the Injustice 2 Flash, thank you for going through that. But you probably remember that I mentioned in that review that the trading card that came included with the Scarlet Speedster wasn't so much pulled from the video game. No screenshots there, but rather instead, they used a picture of the figure. And what we've actually got here from Gorilla Grodd is the very same instance I'm really sure why they couldn't have used this screenshot instead of just figure photography. That's essentially what we're getting here with Gorilla Grodd. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a nice picture. But while all the other trading cards we've been getting up to this point have used images pulled either from the comics or whatever the source material was, and then to get these Injustice figures that are simply just using the figure's photography, I kind of wish that they could have done something different here. Anyways, on the back, you have, of course, the source material, providing the camera's going to focus in on that. Injustice 2 would be the source material. It's from Video Games 2017, real name Grodd. Height, 6 foot 3. You may or may not be able to see that. There we go. He's 600 pounds. A little heftier. He's a big boy. Let's put, it, put that to the side. Normally, this would have been the time that I would have also discussed the accessories that come in clue with Gorilla Grodd. Lone tier. He doesn't come with anything. It's not to say that he's not a bad figure. It's just kind of disappointing the fact he doesn't come with anything else other than the stand, other than the trading card. That's the only thing he comes included with. That being said, let's go ahead and have a look at the figure itself. I feel, I feel, I feel with the shortcomings that the figure has, he still delivers a pretty nice looking Gorilla Grodd. Now, of course, this one is clad in armor, both in a helmet, a chest piece, shoulder armor, and things that are going to attach to the sides of his legs and the front calves as well. I mean, even his toe, for some strange reason, selecting this one as his most favorite of toes on this side and on this side, he's got these little spikes on, attached to his toes. 
interesting, certainly to say the least. I want to look first, certainly at his head sculpt. This would involve me bringing the figure back up into frame so you guys can see a closer look at it. He's in this permanent screaming look. It's not a bad look, but he's permanently like this. You can't open and close the mouth. Although when you're looking at it from the side, the way that they've sculpted the side jaw, which you may or may not be able to see, it looks like it's ledged from the head that's behind it. A couple of times, I even thought first, does this open and close? No, it doesn't. Then I looked at it again. I'm sure it must open and close. No, it doesn't. It is, like I said, permanently open. It does have some nice afforded paint. Although it looks like he's been eating a Tootsie Roll. There's all these little additional browns that they've added to his tongue. I really don't think that that was necessary on a figure like this. I think they could have easily just gone with pink, a lighter color of it, at least, and probably just done away with that brown altogether. His teeth are pretty gnarly looking, both sharp, and they also get painted some additional brown on there as well. Paint, I probably would have corrected a little bit on the mouth, just pulled that back a little bit. It's almost like they're just little splotches of color for no apparent reason whatsoever. The helmet isn't removable, in case you're curious, and it's softer plastic. I suppose at some point, if they wanted to, being that they already have the body of this ape, they easily could just re-release this as an original grod. Just again, removing all this armor piecing. The helmet is nicely sculpted, as you can see there. In a case like this, I would suspect that no additional paint has been applied. This is only just the gold plastic that they've used. You can see there's like little indentations, little damaged parts to the helmet, and that looks really nice. But there's no additional paint anywhere. Not here, not here, not anywhere that you're seeing that's gold. He does also have some really nice pattern work done to the front torso piece. It almost seems like there's a little mouth guard here, although his head is further up. It doesn't seem like it serves a purpose. It kind of looks like it should hinge, but it doesn't. It's just That's just the way it's attached. There's little holes on the side that really don't serve a real functioning purpose. This is, like I said, a separate piece. The one touch of detail I do like, pulled again from the game, is the shoulder pad area that has and sports these skulls. That's super cool. And that's the case actually on both sides as well. The gold plastic also provides a little bit of marbling. Uh, just the result, sometimes usually silver and gold plastics, sometimes are uh, marbled when you see them on figures. You see a lot more of it here on this shoulder. You see there's a little bit of marbling around the skull. I like the sculpting also they did on the shoulder area there with the spikes sticking up. And here all this time we're really talking about the armor and I feel like poor Gorilla Grodd gets overlooked. The sculpting that they actually put on the interior or underneath all of this armor. I guess before that we can spin this around so you can see it from the back. Yeah, I really like the fur. The fur looks good. You could really say, I mean, in a case like this, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of paint really being used. Any of the armor pieces look like they've been applied to the figure after the fact. So underneath that, the furry body of Gorilla Grodd is simply just the molded plastic. It doesn't seem like there's a case where they've actually painted anything. And it's strange, actually, that his behind, yes, I'm drawing everybody's attention to Gorilla Grodd's behind, seems like it's not as shiny as all the other things that are around it. Not really sure what the reasoning is for it, but it does feel like there's a little more of a coarseness to it. Maybe this could have been the one place that was actually painted where everything else is still left to the plastic. But again, from the front, so you can see it. I like the detailing they did around the belt section here as well. It's possible, right? Couldn't they have just removed all these armor pieces as a later release and just simply use the mold? I mean, that's the whole idea why companies want to produce figures. So that they, of course, can get the sales, but then there's also mileage they can make from double dipping the molds. And again, I feel like they could remove these pieces, remove this, remove, well, remove basically everything that's gold, check those things off on your list. They could easily just remove that, I'm sure, and release a standard Gorilla Grodd, maybe with, even with a different head sculpt, and that wouldn't be bad at all. Let's tackle the articulation on Gorilla Grodd. His head, though little more on the limited side, every time you hit the side shoulder pieces, it seems to abruptly stop his head. I mean, this is really to the point anyways that a living creature would be able to rotate its head. Rotating it all the way around would snap its neck and kill it instantly. Or hope, at least, it would kill it instantly. 
I mean, you could technically rotate the head all the way around, but it's going to scratch the chin against the inside of the shoulder pad, and you really don't want that. The head do, does move up, and it does move down, and you can also rock it back and forth as well. As for his shoulders, the shoulders hinge out, but you could probably guess it by the size of his arms, not to mention the additional shoulder armor. It does limit what you can do with his arms. He does have additionally the cup joint on the inside, but I feel like it almost just it almost becomes null and void because it doesn't really allow the arms to hinge out any further than what they're doing, I think, if that wasn't there. And it certainly doesn't mean you can bring them in anymore because he's got these big, beefy gorilla shoulders. He does have a swivel on his bicep. That at least isn't limited. He does have a single hinge on the elbow, which also allows that forearm to rotate. Gorilla Grodd's hands can also rotate back and forth. They're just a little on the tighter side. And you can also hinge him back and forth this way as well. When it comes to his upper torso, his upper torso is on a ball joint. I'm glad to see at least they did that because of so much of what is going on here. It's a super busy looking figure when it comes to sculpting. At least they did incorporate some upper torso articulation. And really, going a little bit further down on his lower belly, he does also have a secondary ball joint. Though this one's a little bit more limited. Gorilla Grodd's legs can split out just only by a mild amount. You can also move the legs forward and back, again, just by a mild amount. He does have knee articulation, which again, are really tight on this figure. Not a bad thing, it's not a bad thing at all. The feet can also hinge back and forth, get a good gander at these gorilla feet. He does have an ankle pivot, and he does also have toe articulation, with his favorite toes, again, having the little gold spikes on them. All in all, not a bad looking figure, I mean, you could very well argue the point that a Gorilla Grodd like this could have easily been released as a Build-A-Figure. It would have then given them the opportunity to release him on a larger scale, making him bigger than the Scarlet Speedster. I really feel like he should have been bigger than Flash. Not only this way, but this way as well. And I think it would have benefited the character better to be released as a Build-A-Figure. And maybe along those ways, they could have also included some additional accessories. Because like I said in this review, Gorilla Grodd comes with a big old goose egg. Didn't like the look of Injustice 2 Flash. Do like the look though of Injustice 2 Gorilla Grodd. The additional armor that's over top the body of the, of the ape really does look nice. I really don't think a lot of paint really came into play here either. Because when you're looking at the, the molding of the armor, I think that's just the plastic. I don't feel like there's been additional gold paint that's applied over top of it. I'm sure anybody of a talented, with a talented artist's skill set could probably go in there with a dry brush, a little bit of black paint, and probably just enriched some of the molding in that armor, just adding a little bit of contrast. That may be something I may even try to do as well. I don't want to do too much though, because I do like the look of the gold, and I feel like if I'm not too careful, adding too much of a dry brush of black may end up just ruining the look of it. But I feel like just a little bit of paint could have gone a long way. Of course, when you strip this guy down, not that you really can anyways, and I would almost really question why you would want to, but if you were to strip this guy down, i got to believe underneath all this could be a serviceable Gorilla Grodd just on his own. Although you will say, I mean, I, I could say, he's a lot more interesting when he's got armor on him. When you, of course, strip this all down, what you're really left with is a, just an articulated gorilla. And out of context, if somebody's just looking at it, they're like, well, why do you have an articulated gorilla on your shelf? You have to keep telling them it's, it's Gorilla Grodd. The figure, yes, could have been a build of figure, but still being released on his own, he actually looks pretty good on a shelf. I just wish, if anything, he could have come included with an accessory, a weapon or something to maim Flash with. Other than that, though, I like the look of him. Just if, unfortunately, he's just a little on the small side. What do you guys think of Gorilla Grodd? Let me know down below in the comments section. And if you guys are also new to this channel, enjoying all the content, as we certainly are always posting new content onto this channel, be sure, be sure, if you can, to hit the subscribe button down below. Be sure as well, if you can, to turn on the bell notification. And be sure as well, if you can, to come back to this channel regularly. Because if you could believe it, Monday to Friday, and even sometimes on the weekends, there is always new video content popping up on this channel guarantee that if you step away, if you go on vacation for a while and come back to this channel, you'll probably find several dozen videos, I kid you not, that you may have missed out on. I would also advise that maybe if you get a chance to come back to this channel, check to the home page and check out the thumbnails listed down below and see if there's any videos that you may have missed because like I said, there's always new stuff popping up 
And speaking of new stuff, we are going to be looking at some more DC Multiverse reviews. So keep your peepers peeled to this channel. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.